welcome to the Random Encounter Show. I'm Deathstalker5, coming in for another of our weekly Table Talk episodes. Yeah, you guys already know the drill around here, or you should anyways. Make sure you have something to drink, come sit at the table, and let's have just a script-free impromptu discussion about whatever the heck we're going to get into. Uh, yeah, this week might be a little bit chaotic, not going to lie. Uh, the holidays are upon us. The madness is upon us. The storm of chaos has reached our shores. Yeah, I, it's getting to the point where it's, I've just had enough of the holidays. <laughs> really, I have. I wish we could just fast forward through this whole little period of the year and, and get out into the new year. Uh, not really, though. Because then what would happen? We would miss the holiday special. Yeah, don't want to miss that. Uh, in fact, I've been doing a lot of work this week behind the scenes, trying to put a little organization on the chaos. Yeah, but things are starting to pick up. Uh, something, a storm is starting to form. I don't know what it's going to be. <laughs> I really don't, but there's stuff in the works. Yeah, uh, we'll just have to wait till we get there. Uh, everybody's going to wait to the last minute, and then we're going to have a mad rush, and that's just part of it, right? Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> I'm sort of spooked, guys. I'm sort of spooked. Uh, anyways, what are we getting into this week? Something we've been into before and something that we've... Uh, really, everything we've been in before, but we're going to be doing just a, a little bit deeper dive. Uh, we're going to be getting into and talking about Monsters, Monsters role-playing game system. Uh, this is specifically second edition. Of course, talking about that, we're going to talk about the game that it evolved from. Tunnels and Trolls. Yeah, let's knock the Tunnels and Trolls out first. That'll just be the easiest way to go from here. If you don't know about Tunnels and Trolls, there, I have... A ton of coverage on the system, specifically Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls, because even though it was the second role-playing game published in history that we know of, it took me until the Kickstarter of Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls released in what? 2015? If my memory serves me correctly, most of the time it doesn't. Yeah, you order a burrito and you get, uh, you get a shoe. From my mind. Anyways, 2015, uh, best that I remember, is when I got into Tunnels and Trolls, or Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls, and I was very much impressed with this system uh, for what it was. Like I said, we've done a full deep delve on Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls, and just Tunnels and Trolls in general, and we've covered all kind of stuff. We've had the Troll Godfather on Ken St. Andre. We've had Steve Crompton on multiple times. We've had Deborah Kerr on. All these people that, that had work or, uh, that, that were responsible, if I can speak English. Yeah, maybe I should start doing these in uh, Spanish. Soy hablo espanol. Ese, ese. Uh, anyways, anyways. <laughs> Yeah, this episode's gonna be chaos. I already feel it. I already feel it. Anyways, uh, we like I said, we've just covered this game, and we're going to continue covering it. I absolutely love it for its abstract nature. I absolutely love it for group play, and of course, it's quite famous in the solitaire RPG enthusiast community, strictly due to all of the solitaire choose-your-own-adventure-style modules released for it over time. There are a lot of them. Yeah, we spent a whole episode going over them and, and only have a fraction of them. Uh, they started being published in... When did Flying Buff... When did Rick Loomis... 1976, I think it was, that Buffalo Castle, the first uh, of the solitaire adventure modules for Tunnels and Trolls, uh, was released, and it was the first... To ever be released in the world of its kind. Yeah, a lot of history with this game. Uh, quite lovely. So yeah, definitely go back and check it out. If anything else, check out the deep delve we did with this. And check out the interview with Steve Crompton and Ken St. Andre. A lot of fun. 
uh, surrounding this game. And we'll be seeing this game off and on throughout this show's history. Because it has just a place in my core library of a few RPGs that I just keep on hand and absolutely love. Uh, now, speaking of 1976, again, if we're not ordering a, sh a burrito and getting a shoe from my mind, another game was released by Ken St. Andre, the creator of Tunnels and Trolls, uh, that was a sister game, as I like to call it, or an analog game. A game that shares the same rule set as the parent game, uh, but approaches whatever it's going to do differently. And of course, we're talking about Monsters, Monsters. Now, not this what I'm holding in my hand. This is the second edition that we're going to talk about. Uh, but Monsters, Monsters was released, and while it happened, while it while it shared the rules with Tunnels and Trolls, and even shared the world, the campaign world that Ken St. Andres and others had been developing called Troll World, uh, the whole approach to role-playing games uh, play was completely different. Tunnels and Trolls uh, is most it, it with with its con, with games that are con, like contemporaries and such uh, typical RPGs we should say. Uh, what do we get uh, for player characters and stuff? We get what people might just simplistically call the good guys, the humans, the halflings or hobbits, uh, dwarves, elves, etc. Yeah, and they go out and they battle against orcs and goblins and trolls and the minions of darkness. Uh, the approach to Monsters, Monsters was, as far as I can tell, just completely new when it was released. And it stays pretty much as an individual game that's unique out there in the world even today. Uh, instead of creating the orcs, I mean, instead of creating the Elves and dwarves and humans and such uh, good kindred, as they would be called in Troll World, uh, Monsters Monsters would have you roll up what typically would be their adversaries. <laughs> We're talking goblins, orcs, trolls, uh, fantastical beasts of all sorts, just every, every kind of uh, monster you can think of. And you approached it as if you existed in the world and those elves and those pesky humans and those nasty little hobbits uh, were, your, were the adversaries. They were your enemies. So your role-playing game might revolve around living in a cave or a dungeon and trying to stop those nasty little adventurers that are always trying to come in and steal all the treasure. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely lovely theme for this game. Absolutely love the mode of this game. Uh, but yeah, this game was released in 1976. And through the years, it never shared the same success as Tunnels and Trolls did. Uh, but, you know, it was always out there as something that you know, that if you really love Troll World and you really love Tunnels and Trolls or you just want a really just weird role-playing game or different role-playing game, try this kind of thing. Yeah, I don't know. I I'm just giving you my perspective of it. I wasn't there in 1976 when this was released. <laughs> okay, so you just have to... I'm sure we got people in the comments who can tell us about... Monsters, monsters back in the day. Steve Steve Crompton hangs out around here. Ken St. Andre and such. And who better to hear from? Uh, but it just never shared the success with its parent game. Uh, as we know, Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls. I got into it with the Kickstarter. This is 2015. Uh, Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls sort of revitalized the whole scene around Tunnels and Trolls. Uh, and it's even gained more popularity as time has went forward because our solo hobby has been getting so much attention lately, especially during like the lockdown er era of COVID and such. <laughs> Anyways, uh, in 2019, I believe it was, I believe that's when I started seeing the rumors floating around that they were working on a new project. Uh, Ken St. Andre came up with the idea that he wanted to, uh, republished the toughest dungeon in the world 
Yeah, he wanted to update the rules, revamp it, and, and just do a whole new work up on it and release it as a solo adventure with some mini rules throw in to play it with Monsters Monsters. We've got a copy here, by the way, the Judges Guild. This is the original. Uh, this one isn't so easy to find nowadays, so I keep it in plastic. I believe it was released in 1980 or 1981. Uh, Kevin Sambita actually did the illustrations for it. Uh, it was for use with Tunnels and Trolls and Monsters Monsters. Uh, going into this second edition, reading the intro, Ken says he wanted to do like some mini Monsters Monsters rules uh, to add in with the toughest dungeon in the world. And Ken St. Andre and a few others said, why don't we release the second edition of Monsters Monsters. You know, that the game had went relatively untouched since 1979. And also Ken wrote that the toughest dungeon in the world was actually two different solo modules he had been working on that were going to be strictly for Monsters Monsters. Uh, but they ended up combining them and releasing them under the TNT and MM uh, names. So that was interesting. Anyways, in 2020, we got the second edition of Monsters, Monsters. Uh, for the regulars around here that's been sticking around for uh, since we started, uh, you've seen this pop up on my table and we've talked about it here and there. I said, it's time for us to sort of get in depth with it and just uh, talk about what it's great for and what you can expect as well as some products and things this came out afterwards. Why is this a good time? Uh, Ken St. Andre came on a few months ago and they announced that Monsters Monsters was getting a new release, the 2.7 version of the rules. Yeah, uh, it looks fantastic. It's going to be re released very soon. Yeah, I think they're waiting on the last printer of something. Yeah, so keep your eyes peeled if you're part of that Kickstarter. Uh, but this 2020 edition is technically just the 2.0 edition. Uh, now, what what are you going to expect here? You're going to expect exactly what I said. That instead of playing the typical heroic, humanistic uh, creatures, you're in for a role-playing game that you play the adversaries in. You know, on the back it says, what does it say? Here there be monsters and you are one of them. Fantastic artwork throughout the book, but what do you expect? Steve Crompton and crew worked on this. Um, but, uh, and really, when I first saw this, when I first saw this announced in the release, I was sort of apprehensive about it. Yeah? Why? Because with Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls, one of the things that I thought made it really deluxe was section, I believe it's 13. It is section 13. that we have section 13, we have what essentially is a whole section of the deluxe rules dedicated to the approach of monsters, monsters. So I said, I'm already playing pretty much monsters, monsters uh, in deluxe tunnels and trolls. And I like how it's just combined in that way. It's just one big role playing game system I can work with. Uh, but I, Steve Crompton ended up did end up sending over a copy of Monsters Monsters. I'm glad that he did. Uh, Steve, uh, Steve, Ken, and others they they really worked to update this system and make it really stand apart from Tunnels and Trolls as best they could. Uh, now, when it comes to the rules, if you've played Tunnels and Trolls, you're immediately going to know how to play this. There have been some minor changes to the rules as far as the actual mechanics go such as spike damage and deluxe tunnels and trolls and and tunnels and trolls every edition that i've ever looked at spike damage were counted off six uh on the d6 rolls on every, every dice that rolled a six was a point of spike damage in monsters monsters it is now changed to a one another thing about monsters monsters is monsters do not have classes like we have in Tunnels and Trolls and in other uh, role-playing games that are on class and level systems. 
Uh, instead, uh, monsters in, in, in the new edition, in this 2.0 edition, all the monsters have special abilities that they have that can be either activated by the player choice or activated by certain types of die roll or saving throws and such. Uh, but just, just overall, it was a great revamp. And there were some additions of things that Tunnels and Trolls never had that I absolutely loved. One of those being stunting. Stunting is the... In combat, you decide you want to do something that's not just part of the abstract combat back and forth throwing dice at each other. Yeah, maybe you want to do a leg sweep. Maybe you want to jump over... You want to grab hold of a shield and try to pull it down and you're... you're uh, Ally stab, stab the guy holding the shield. I don't know. Uh, just about anything you can think of. They've taken what made what made Tunnels and Trolls stand out so well is it's got that sort of universal saving throw system. Uh, with stunting, you can use that saving throw system to get a little more detail out of your combat as it's happening on the table. Uh, Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls, for those who are used to it, uh, they did have something similar strictly for the martial artists who were unarmed. Uh, but in here, stunting is available for, I believe, every kind of monster. Uh, but yeah, the combat, though, pretty much exactly the same. Yeah, that you add, you have one side versus the other side, and they create two dice pools. You add up all the modifiers, you add up all the weapons and such for both sides, of how many dice they get. You roll them, compare the numbers, the, lose, the, the side that rolls the highest plus their modifiers and such wins the combat. The loser takes the difference in the two sums. Yeah, that's, that's pretty easy to explain it. We get more in depth on part three of the deep delve with tunnels and trolls. And now we've got a cat fight right here in the living room. <laughs> Don't you guys know I'm making a hit show around here? The greatest game and show that human civilization will ever know. Uh, what are you doing? Behave yourselves. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, same with missile, uh, m missile combat as well. Uh, works out the same as you would uh, figure in uh, Tunnels and Trolls. Uh, character progression also works along with t uh, the same way that Tunnels and Trolls did. They added in a chaos factor. Yeah? Now that allows you to make some changes to roles and such. It's, uh, it's a new addition and it's an optional rule. Me, I could see where it could be useful, but I could also see where it could be easily abused. Uh, so a game master would probably want to take control of that and put some kind of limitations on it. When we get over to the magic... Yeah, by the way, I should be showing the illustrations off here. Let's go here. When we get over to the magic there, I'll show you some illustrations out of the book here in a second. Uh, the magic, the spell list is very short. And it's a short selection up to level five spells. Yeah, and I think that makes sense uh, because for the most part, there's monsters in here that probably wouldn't have the ability to learn much more magic than they would naturally be imbued. And can we speak? I don't know. They, it, it's just a lot of monsters in here that just wouldn't be able to learn new magic spells like wizards and such would in tunnels and trolls. Uh, so that makes a lot of sense, but they also suggest that if you have tunnels and trolls, now I've got a cat behind me. If, if, if it flies on me and attacks me for yelling at it, uh, oh well. Uh, they expected you to take, uh, well not expected, they, you had the option of bringing spells over from deluxe tunnels and trolls to use in Monsters Monsters. But I think the spell list actually served Monsters Monsters very well here. Yeah, plus you guys know me. I, I'm not a huge magic gamer you know, when it comes to my tabletop games, I want to swing swords. I want to chop heads off. You know, I don't, I don't want no sissy wizards. <laughs> anyways, 
Anyways, uh, yeah, just overall, though, just a fantastic production. I'll put a link down below, uh, my affiliate link. If you plan on grabbing Monsters, Monsters, use that affiliate link. It helps us grab some stuff for the show around here. Uh, you guys have been doing a fantastic job, by the way, with the affiliate links. It's helped us get a few things. Uh, maybe a few things that'll come in before the holiday special. Who knows? Because uh, I only deal with print stuff, right? Yeah. Anyways, like I said, overall, they did enough here that I think is justified that you would have this system even if you own deluxe tunnels and trolls. Yeah? The atmosphere of the game, they've captured it perfectly. Using monsters, there's even advice for role-playing monsters. Something that a lot of RPG writers oftentimes overlook. They want to give you a lot of mechanics and a lot of examples and a lot of situations and all this kind of stuff. But there's very little actually written on the role-playing side of the uh, game system. So I think they put in good examples and they showed how you could play a monster and think about playing a monster. Uh, yeah, just for the illustrations though, I mean, what do, what do I got to tell you? You know, it's, uh, like I said, it's Steve Crompton and crew. What do I need to tell you? Now, this softback version of the rules, uh, it contains your full rules for Monsters, Monsters, second edition. It includes your character progression. It includes, uh, your items and such you would expect to find, uh, for like some of the monsters to have. Most of them won't have them. Uh, goblins, orcs, and that kind of stuff definitely might be using weapons and armor. So they do give you enough to work with there, and, and that's fantastic. Um, when it comes to creating your monsters, they give you these very handy uh, tables to use where your monster uh, stats, their multipliers are listed out. Now, you'll probably want to have a calculator handy when you roll up your monsters, <laughs> okay? But they are, they are statted out along with their special power. Uh, let's go through the list here and see some of the stuff we can play. A bat troll, a centaur, lizard man, or a desiree. Uh, gargoyle, goblin, gorgon, gremlins. I love the gremlins of tunnels and trolls and monsters, monsters, by the way. Uh, living skeletons, ogres, harpies, minotaurs, mummies, ratlings, troll, uh, s s s trolls of flesh and stone, vampires, yetis, zombies. And those are your humanoid monsters. Over here, they've got your non-humanoid monsters, chain beasts, chimeras. Chompcholas, dire wolves, dragons, uh, Hopperman Toadster. I play <laughs> Mr. the Hopperman Toadster. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, the giant slugs, obsidian spiders, uh, sphinx, unicorns, etc. Uh, so it covers a whole lot of ground. And you might think yourself that this is a little bitty thin rule book. Yeah, they they're, they're, they got down to the meat and potatoes here, guys. And it's an abstract game, so you don't need a ton of rules for this. Uh, all you need is your base mechanics and how to roll these monsters up. The game just goes from there. It's all about the storytelling. Uh, one thing that they did a fantastic job on was you got the Monsters of Troll World. Yeah, it's basically a glossary of each of the monsters listed in the table. Uh, many of them are illustrated. Uh, you get their appearance. You get their special abilities and all explained to you. Uh, I think it's the only game where you can that they, they that you can roll up a giant slug. <laughs> its special ability is poison slime that does one d6 of damage for each ten points of monster rating or character level that the slug may have. Absolutely stuff like this. You even get the rarity of like how how common, uncommon, or rare uh, it is for these monsters to be found in Troll World. Uh, but absolutely love it. Uh, another thing is, is it brings over the MR system. Our monster rating system from Tunnels and Trolls. Uh, like I said there, I'll say it again for this. 
the MR system makes these games literally the easiest games I know of to be a game master over, especially in Prompt 2. Uh, with the monster rating, a single number gives you all the relevant information you need to know to throw in whatever it is you're throwing in at an appropriate level to do combat and such with the player characters. Yep, for solo play, if you do sandbox like I do, that's extremely easy. You just anything, you just uh, give an MR to whatever on the fly. You know, no prep work needed when it comes to if you want to just do some impromptu gaming. If you want to roll on some tables for your sandbox style solo game. You know, you're not having to just run all over five or six different books to find the stats for a creature or a monster and you don't have to sit there and roll up NPCs if you don't have it. Uh, so yeah, that's that's one thing about uh, Tunnels and Trolls and Monsters Monsters. I find just absolutely brilliant. In fact, in Monsters Monsters, monster rating is also man rating. Why? Because those elves, dwarves, and humans, and those uh, halflings and all that, they're the adversaries here. <laughs> I don't know, guys. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but it's just overall, it's just a, just a fun romp. It's definitely gonzo. It's definitely gonzo. It's definitely something different. And we'll talk more about that toward the end of the video with the uh, sort of final thoughts on what I use Monsters Monsters for, what I think about it. Now... We talked about how 2nd edition Monsters Monsters were set, was set in Troll World. Yeah? Now, when Ken St. Andre sold the rights to TNT uh, when Web Sphere bought Flying Buffalo Incorporated, like we said, he named this game the successor. And they quickly went to work uh, separating this game from the fly from the tunnels and trolls troll world we'll talk more about that for a second one thing i wanted to show off before we go any further I'm getting ahead of myself uh that that we got steve sent over here that you can find for this game first off beautiful game master screen yeah hold it up here if it covers my faces it'll fight my faces what <laughs> if i cover my face normally the camera will focus in a little bit better uh yeah, just absolutely beautiful. And this is and this is a case where the game master screen it absolutely captured everything you're going to need to be a game master. Like I said, you got a framework of rules here. This is a tool set. This is just that's exactly what it's a tool set. You don't need much more. Yeah? Uh but you got everything relevant you're going to need to run this game for anything. Yeah? Uh we talked about oh we talked about Tunnels and Trolls, at, not Tunnels and Trolls, Monsters, Monsters, and, and how Toughest Dungeon of the World brought it on. I will say in the back of this soft cover book, they give you, which is absolutely a fantastic uh, adventure, the ruins of Hayoku. Yeah, a Game Master Adventure for Monster Monsters by Ken St. Andre and Stephen Jones. It's mapped out. Everything is statted out, the story is there, and everything is ready to go. Uh, one thing I really like about this Monster Monster Adventure uh, that I hadn't seen a whole lot of in the Game Master Adventures for Tunnels and Trolls and such, which is helpful for us solo sandbox players, is they added in tables of random encounters uh, based on locations. Uh, they also added us in a treasure generator. So absolutely love that. Yeah, that'll teach me to get ahead of myself. But, but, they also released, and this is, this is the killer stuff. You know, this is, this is, this is why it's important to watch what Steve and Ken do over there. Trollhalla Press. They also released a leather bound edition that looks very much like the deluxe tunnels and trolls leather bound edition that we showed off. Uh, absolutely love it. This is Monsters Monsters 2.0 and toughest dungeon in the world. This was a special release. 
Uh, this leather bound edition contains everything that the soft cover book did. Has these just beautiful end papers. Come on, book nerd. You guys know I, I don't know why we end up showing so many end papers off. Uh, but when they're well done, they're well done. Uh, but this one also contained the toughest dungeon in the world, revamped, updated, ready to go for Monsters 2.0. Adventure, solitaire adventure, and it's a big one. Yeah, it's a big one, uh, much larger than the original adventure was. So, yeah, absolutely love it. And it made having this edition, this leather bound edition, this special version of the rules, having that extra in there really just set this apart. Where, like, deluxe tunnels and trolls. While the leather bound edition was absolutely a stunner, you know, I mean, this is a stunner. Uh, it even includes sort of the troll green in papers and stuff like the deluxe edition. Uh, but the deluxe edition, it was a stunner, but it had no extra information or no internal changes uh, to the actual written material. Uh, so having this in this form, uh, I think is brilliant because uh, you get the extra adventure included. So it really does make it feel like a special edition. Yeah? What else? Uh, we got a few sets of these. They released standees, which we've seen over the years. I think Steve and them, they do such a fantastic job on these. Now, you guys know I'm a miniature gamer. I want to paint my miniatures. I want to have my miniatures. But I can appreciate... Uh, just how good looking and high qualities the, these are. This isn't just normal, you know, computer paper. This is a glossy sort of, I would think it is almost sort of waterproof as well, but it's like a cardstock or something. So if you want to cut, if you wanted to cut these out and use these for your, uh, instead of miniatures on the table, you absolutely could. So just a fantastic addition. It reminds me a lot of, of, what did Steve Jackson do? The Paper Heroes, I think. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. It reminds me a lot of those. Uh, now, now we can get past the 2.0 edition of Monsters Monsters. Now, for all of you that's been on this channel for a while, you've definitely seen the Monsterary of Zimrala. If you haven't seen it, this is something you probably should see. You want to talk about end papers one more time? They took it to a whole new level. That's the actual end papers there. Yeah, whole new level. Uh, Monsterary of Zimrala, a new world. Usable with any RPG, but written for monsters, monsters. Uh, I was along from the very beginning of this project. You know, Steve announced a project here on the show last year. Uh, maybe almost two years ago, really. Uh, and I was very excited from what he was talking about. And I got to watch this thing come together over time. I even got to work on playtesting some of the, one of the solo adventure modules that, that uh, was released right alongside this game as well. We're not going to get into that. You guys can go back and find uh, the Zimrala Kickstarter release and see all of the beautiful stuff we got for this. We got a few things here on the table. Uh, the maps, the cards, the extra materials and such. Th these guys go wild. Uh, but what was Zimrala? Zimrala was Monsters Monsters Complete Divorce from Troll World. Yeah? But it wasn't just that they were going to build a brand new world and start from scratch. They did, sort of. Instead, Steve Crompton and Deborah Kerr brought their universe over from the City of the Gods. You guys have seen that stuff around here. It's fantastic. Uh, they brought in City of the Gods. Uh, Ken St. Andre brought stuff in from Troll World. Other people contributed all over to this uh, to this continent of Zimrala, and it's sort of a Pangean massive continent that hasn't separated in the world yet. Uh, there's sci-fi elements in this. There's a lot of fantasy elements, but it's a world of portals. Yeah, and it's absolutely. At first, you're going to think this is going to be Chaos AD, uh, but they brought it together in such a great form. 
Uh, and this, like I said, has become the campaign setting of Monsters, Monsters. And I've, I've read through this multiple times. I've used it for some solo gaming. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you that Zimrala outdoes Troll World. Troll World, well, I mean, it, it, we got to say everything with a grain of salt, right? Everything's subjective. For me, Zimrala outdoes Troll World because I love adventuring around this new world. I love seeing, I love City of the Gods. I love uh, Troll World itself. Seeing those familiar elements coming in through portals into this world and the world being open for exploration and so many people contributing stuff, it's just a brilliant, brilliant uh, campaign setting. The fact that the portals brought people into this world also means that you can actually visit other worlds with characters from this world. You can come from other... I can come from Troll World to this world if I choose to. It just opens it up and it makes this game feel like it's part of several different universes. In fact, any universe you could want to use, uh, you could easily write it in for Zimrala. But just on its face value, Zimrala is a very mysterious, uh, huge continent uh, that's just open for exploration. And it's so fun just to get in here and dive around and, and think about all the different things and ways you could play on the continent here. And they didn't even stop with the continent. Yeah, they added in... Uh, they added in, we got a map from the City of the Gods and and, and, and explanation. Uh, but they added in even the uh, astronomy. We got, what is it, the seven moons? That's what I'm looking for. And you've got different beings in different places on the moons themselves. Uh, you've got the Seekers, which is sort of a sci-fi element that these are beings that's come to Zimrala to experiment and capture specimens of, of native wildlife and stuff coming through the portals. I absolutely love it. Uh, so you got the campaign setting. Uh, you got a full explanation of everything for this campaign setting. From a full detailed massive history to an atlas to a glossary to how magic works, how the portals work. Uh, there's even notes and stuff in here about cultures and ecologies. Of how things work here it's just it's just well done and it's the perfect uh, camp kind of campaign setting that I love where you could there's those how many moons how many moons the seven moons yeah but there's so much to work with here that you can just adapt this for anything yeah it's it's just wide open for your storytelling it's just wide open for your sandboxing and such uh, I just absolutely love it. Another thing that it did was it updated Monsters, Monsters big time. Uh, we got in a massive amount of new monsters to play uh, with the Monsters, Monsters rule set. Yeah, people contributed from all over the world. People that were part of the Kickstarter and stuff. Steve Crompton, Ken St. Andre... Uh, they went deep in the recesses of their mind and they brought things uh, brought things to life that only they could. <laughs> Absolutely love it. The artwork in the book, we've seen it a lot, guys, but you already know Steve Crompton and crew, it's outstanding. Uh, but yeah, you now have a massive amount of different monsters and creatures, many that you've probably never dreamed of. Yeah, I, I, I found stuff that I was fascinated about, by. It was, uh, it was absolutely brilliant. Uh, so yeah, and when I say you get a massive amount, you get a massive amount. This is a full bestiary. It's a full bestiary. It's a full campaign setting. It's a full bestiary. Uh, they introduced different demons and such that we hadn't seen before. Uh, like I said, overall, just fantastic. And they helped this out. They included... Again, our tables for figuring out uh, how to roll up all of these creatures and use them for player characters. Uh, but absolutely love it. 
How many times are we going to say it? One more time. I, I do. I love this. So, like I said, it, everything's brought in here. It includes a, a huge adventure. The Temple of the Dwan. Absolutely fantastic. And what else did we get? We got an updated Monsters, Monsters rules, uh, specifically for Zimrala set in Zimrala. Yeah, and I absolutely love it. Yeah. Uh, in fact, we also got this. I was going to show something here that I noticed. We had this. We had the Monsters Monsters 2.0. Uh, then we got Zimrala. We got its Dragon Hide cover. Yeah, super beautiful. But now notice it goes from having a pair of arms to having two pair of arms. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I love weird little details like that. Uh, but yeah, a massive update to Monsters Monsters. Uh, it really, the Zim, the monsterary of Zimrala pushed Monsters Monsters into new territory. Yeah, and I absolutely love where it's going. Uh, basically, this updated Monsters Monsters close to what Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls did for Tunnels and Trolls. So yeah, it, like I said, massive upgrade. Uh, a lot of new material and stuff. Guys, I'm sure most of you have checked this out. If you haven't, like I said, this could be used for just about any role-playing game you want out there. Any genre. It's a world for you to come explore, no matter what world you're coming from. Yeah? Let me get something to drink before my mouth sort of going dry. <clears throat> there we go. Yeah, so just I absolutely... Love that. Now, when it comes to Monsters, Monsters, the 2.0 edition, uh, to be honest, this would not be a game that I would use for major campaigns. You know, uh, this is a game, when I, when I look at Monsters, Monsters, this is a game that's going to be excellent for group play. Yeah, I said that about Tunnels and Trolls, that I know it's famous for the solo adventures. There's a lot of solo adventures coming out under the Monsters Monsters brand name. Yet they're all fantastic. And you could really use Monsters Monsters rules to play the Tunnels and Trolls adventures that came out before 2.0. Or you could actually use your deluxe TNT rules to, to play the, the modern uh, stuff that came out after Monsters Monsters. Uh, Mission for a Cat Goddess, for example. That's what I was trying to think of. Uh, one of the best solos I've read. I think Ken uh, topped himself with that one, to be honest. Uh, but this this is definitely, I would consider it more for group gaming, though. Uh, first off, playing a monster. It's different. It's a lot of fun. But I think it's a more appropriate for a break in a major campaign. You know, that... You want to sit down. This is very much what I would consider a beer and pretzels sort of RPG. It's like, we got some friends coming together. Uh, we don't have a game going on right now. Let's get some beer. Let's get some pretzels. Let's sit at the table and let's laugh our heads off for a few hours. Because cause like I said, this Tunnels and Trolls is sort of gonzo in nature. Monsters, Monsters is very gonzo in nature. <laughs> yeah. So it's, uh, like I said, it's just going to shine as a group experience. Uh, in fact, it's, it's like Tunnels and Trolls. It's one of those games that shines that if you want to play an online game without the virtual tabletop, if you want to play a game without miniatures and all that, they're absolutely not needed. You're not even going to miss them. You're not going to think about them. Uh, you know, just so the storytelling is up front and everything. But I, like I said, playing all these wild and crazy monsters, especially... Uh, just as one shots and stuff it, it, it's a lot of fun it's a barrel of laughs i've had a lot of fun with this system uh with groups off and on uh zimrala though sort of takes it to another level zimrala this this zimrala and the monster monster rules with zimrala uh this is where i think the the rule set sort of takes on a more serious tone not not that none of it's very serious i mean we are dealing with the troll godfather after all right but it does take on a more serious approach to where you could definitely play some campaign games here, get pretty serious RPGs, 
uh, into it. Not that you couldn't with Monster Monsters, guys. We don't make blanket statements here. Everything's subjective. I could absolutely run just about everything I wanted to run using th this rule set, even though it's mostly a framework of a rule set. Uh, so don't take it wrong here. I know there's a lot of people that's been playing campaigns with 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 these rules uh but but overall for me you know i'm more used to playing much more substantial role-playing games uh where let's see how many pages you know this is this is this is 64 pages long you know this might cover the explanation of how the rules work for Rollmaster third edition or something i don't know uh, but with with Zimra with with Zimrala coming in, like I said, it just takes the game to a different tone. It really sets it up to be a game where that if you want to roll up in characters and explore this world, you've got more meat and more potatoes behind the game to really work with. So I absolutely love it. Uh, yes, it was sad that they somewhat departed from Troll World, but I was absolutely elated that some of the troll world beings and such had made it to this world and that the portals were active and all that. Now, of course, you could just homebrew that kind of stuff in. But I love that attention to detail. I love that, you know, that this game has a shared history and they acknowledge it with deluxe tunnels and trolls or just tunnels and trolls in general and troll world. Uh, but yeah, this is, this is where the game really took off for me. Uh, there'll be links down below for all this stuff. You know, we've covered it. Go back and check out the videos. Uh, but again, you know, like I said, it's worth having this in your collection. It is for me. Uh, there's very few RPG systems I would consider, at least for myself, to be just fantastic for beer and pretzel style game. Normally that's stuff I leave for dungeon crawling board games and stuff. Uh, but but yeah, this this is hard to beat. Yeah, some of the scenarios and some of the things you can end up uh, being involved with as player characters and such. Even the game master is going to be laughing their heads off at this. I promise you. I promise you. My Hopper Toad Man. I played a Hopper Toad Man. We talked about that earlier, right? Uh, we, we'll just go ahead and say that balance is not a concern with these with 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 the 2.0 editions. Ken Saint Andre wrote that himself. That this is about storytelling. Don't worry about men maxing all this balance, all this kind of stuff. I've gave you a framework of rules. You've got to bring it. You've got to put, you've got to make it what you want to make it. It's your game. I absolutely love the hobby-centric attitude uh, that Ken St. Andre continues to have in his games, even though other games have long left it behind. Uh, but yeah, this is a tool set. This is for you to make what you want to make out of it. But my Hopper Toad Man... Uh, he had a poisonous dart tongue, right? <laughs> and when you rolled combat, if you rolled two ones, his tongue came out and would grab the weapons from the enemies, right? Uh, <laughs> almost every combat we went through, I guess I just kept getting luckier and luckier. Uh, all of our enemies were disarmed. <laughs> I absolutely loved it. Yeah. So, yeah, this is, like I said, like I said, group of friends, you guys been doing some serious gaming and want to take a break. This is well worth having in the library. Pull it off the shelf. Uh, everybody, no matter if they've played Tunnels and Trolls or Monsters, Monsters before, you're going to be able to hand out some index cards, some pencils, whatever. Break out the D6 dice because that's all it uses. And, and roll up your characters and everybody's going to be playing within 15 to 20 minutes. Yeah, it's, it's very easy to learn. It's very easy to pick up, especially if somebody's at the table just sort of running you through it that already knows what's going on. Uh, so absolutely love it for that. Uh, it does share the, what I consider a, well, I wouldn't consider it a flaw, but it does share just like with tunnels and trolls that this game for me at least sort of loses it when it gets to higher level play you know so for me i always keep my monsters monsters games and my tunnels and trolls games down in lower levels because i don't want to be rolling hundreds of d6 dice and then picking through them and adding this and figuring out spike damage it, it just it stops the game everything has to slow down and of course, you could use your different apps on your mobile devices or computers for your dice rolling.
yeah. Uh, but anyways, like I said, it doesn't. It, it's not really a flaw for me because it's very easy to play this game at low levels. There's really no reason you would have to actually level your characters if you didn't want to. Use the monster rating system. Whatever they encounter, it can always be a challenge, but never too crazy. Yeah, that's how easy it is to customize on the fly anything coming into this game. Uh, absolutely love it. Absolutely love it for what I use it for. I think if, if, if it sounds interesting to you, I think you should absolutely grab it. Uh, that you're going to have a good time with it. If you're more interested into the deeper stuff, but still have that, we're going to play monsters of all sorts. And I mean all sorts when it comes to uh, the monster areas in Rala. But you want something with a little more meat and potatoes in which to enjoy your game with a campaign, campaign setting and such. Uh, Zimral is definitely a big recommendation. Uh, now before we go, I wanted to talk about one other edition of Monsters Monsters that I have. And it's the Japanese edition that was released in, I believe, 2019. Uh, this was a very interesting. I actually got these from Steve. Uh, we have, believe it or not, we have uh, we have members of the Random Encounter Army in Japan. They were playing our videos at a Japanese uh, sushi bar at one point. Yeah, absolutely love it. Uh, there's uh, Akira. There's two Akiras that watch. You know that I've spoken with, and uh, but yeah, they'll know a lot about this. But this comes from Group S N E. Yeah, they are the pub. They are the licensed publisher in Japan for Flying Buffalo's products. Uh, when it comes to Monsters, Monsters, though, I think this was the first edition for for Japan, and it contains the cover is the first edition of the original 1976 uh, American version, if I'm not mistaken, and I absolutely love it. Yeah, absolutely love my vintage fantasy art. Nothing like it. Uh, as far as I can tell, though, guys, I don't speak Japanese. Uh, but I can use my phone as a translator. Right? So I mess around with that. Uh, they went all out for their edition. I think this came out uh, a little after Deluxe. Uh, but they went all out for this, um, for their edition of Monsters, Monsters. So, of course, you get your... No, this was... Yeah, 2019. So it, it comes with your Monsters, Monsters rule set based on the 1976 rule set by Ken St. Andre. It also comes with the adventure, The Toughest Dungeon in the World, copyright 1980 by Ken St. Andre. So I was right, 1980. My memory's not that bad. Uh, and then there was another adventure included called Capture the Troll, which I'm not aware of, that was released in 2016 by... Uh, Ken St. Andre. And, uh, yeah, you get your rules, you get your character sheet, all the sort of stuff you would expect. You also got a glossary style uh, listing for each of the monsters. And then you got your adventures, and they're fully mapped out and stuff. So I just love seeing what they do in Japan with uh, role-playing games from here. Look at that artwork for Toughest Dungeon in the World, huh? Yeah, they just do a fantastic job. Uh, but this was actually volume one of that release. We actually got, or they got, I guess we as humans got, from group S and E, we got volume two of Monsters, Monsters. Uh, this one included quite a few things. Uh, most... A bulk of it is called The Troll God's Terrible 20, uh, 2017 by Ken St. Andre. Uh, now, I remember that being, and I think it still is, on the Trollhalla Press on drive through uh, But it's lots and lots of new monsters. I counted through here. I counted more than 20. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on here. It's definitely more than 20, though. Uh, but just fantastic monsters from all over your imagination. Lots of illustrations, uh, explanations, etc. Look at that Hydra there, for example. Yeah, 
I don't know. I love looking at, you know, that I've got some Japanese tunnels and trolls and stuff, but when Ken said he had a Japanese version of Monsters Monsters, their first version of it, I've definitely had to grab it and check it out. Anyways, anyways. How many times did I say Monsters Monsters versus Monsters and Monsters? I don't know. I'll find out when I edit the video. <laughs> anyways, guys. A little bit chaotic of a video, uh, but yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's a lot of fun talking about this stuff. Uh, upcoming for 2024, when we start to push the gas a little bit more, we'll get in and, and we're, I think we're going to finally start some gameplay videos. I'm not sure. You guys let me know in the comments, please. Uh, me, I don't actually watch people play games. Yeah, that's not something I've ever been interested in. I don't know why. Uh, but it's just, it, it, it's just, to me, I could fall asleep. I could fall asleep. I like hearing people talk about games and sharing stories about games. Obviously, that's what we do around here. Uh, but as far as just watching them throw dice and move pieces around boards or do their RPGs with their weird voices and all that, I don't know, guys. I don't know. It, it's just not been something I wanted to partake in. Uh, but I do know that I'm a weird person, right? There's a lot of people that love that stuff. And there's a lot of it that you can learn by watching. I get it. So I'm going to be trying to figure out how I want to present some gameplay videos uh, in the future. You'll let me know. My idea is that if we do sort of a campaign, we'll, we'll do an introduction video. We'll talk about what tools we're using, what tools I've built. Uh, what all I'm pulling from, and then after that, we'll mainly focus on the story of the game with taking a few breaks to explain some things if they come up. You know, maybe we have to make a customized tool or something to attach to our oracle to or an event table or something to handle something that comes up in the game. Uh, for the solo side, yeah? Um... Uh, talking with others we might have some group gaming going along as well hey sometimes group gaming can be pretty fun to watch just for the banter back and forth who knows we got a lot planned for you i'm talking with some other people uh we've got several projects i've got several projects that i've just been working on uh definitely trying to get this show full time definitely trying to get the background projects uh finished up but it just seems like every step forward i take there's two steps back so, but we're coming along. We're pushing. I'm not giving up. This has been a little dream of mine. And when we got to a thousand subscribers, there's, you, you couldn't, wild horses couldn't pull me away from this. Yeah. Anyways, like I said, like I said, I got some other people, uh, members of the show here, some other YouTubers and stuff, uh, some new projects and some collaborations and stuff. We're going to try to flesh out, work out and make happen in the upcoming year. Uh, for those that are interested in Monsters, Monsters, uh, like us, the chaos of this show, uh, version 2.7 is on the cusp of being released. I mean, it could be literally any day now when they get their printed, when they get their stuff in for the printer. Uh, if Monsters, Monsters interests you, I would definitely be looking out for version 2.7 to hit drive through at some point, any, any day now. Yeah, for the PDF and such. They're going to have to fulfill their Kickstarter first. Uh, but yeah, I'm very interested in checking that out. But on the other hand, I just love this for being just the beer and pretzel style game that it is. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. What are we going to do now? We're going to get something to drink. My wife's going to blow her lid if, if, if I don't cut this camera off so she can finish making dinner. And it's time to get back to work sorting things out for the holiday special and painting miniatures. Anyways, anyways, this has been the Random Encounter Show, and I'll see you shortly. Hey, this is Devstalker5. I wanted to thank you for watching the Random Encounter Show. If you love tabletop gaming, solo RPGing, or classic video games, make sure you're subscribed to our channel. If you want more of the show, head over to our channel's About page. There you will find our Facebook and Facebook group pages. 
where you can join in on the fun. Want to help support the show? Make sure to use our affiliate and sponsor links next time you're shopping for your favorite gaming products. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time when we roll for Random Encounter.